Morning guys, we are on Hebrews chapter 10. We're reading from verse 26 to 29. Um, haven't done one since Wednesday. I've been away. But we're going to start uh, on this Monday and get straight into quite a sobering passage. And it's, it says, For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. And so if there is a continuing and a willful habit of sin after receiving the knowledge of truth and this is um, looking at the cross references true knowledge um, and Romans 3 20 talks about knowledge after the law when you know what is wrong and you make a decision to carry on and carry on as we go through this passage a hardening happens in your heart and that conviction of sin no longer is so clear and there will be a stage where you can no longer come back to Christ. Um, the context, of, just to remind you of Hebrews, here the Hebrews, they've received the knowledge of Christ, under the, who He is under the New Covenant, but they continue to reject Christ. And so there's many pictures of these, like the Pharisees, um, who knew Jesus, saw His uh, miracles, heard the Gospel over and over again. They saw His power over <coughs> demons over nature over sickness um, they heard him say that he is the son of god come to save the world of sin and they rejected the gospel and rejected him and they continued to reject him um, and so in exodus 21 verse 14 it says but if a man willfully attacks another to kill him by cunning you shall take him away from my altar that he may die <coughs> if you willfully attack someone he willfully kills someone and so it's very different to someone who accidentally killed someone um, very different to someone who doesn't know doesn't have that knowledge of God and they land up in sin um, it's someone who, who continues to reject Jesus over and over again there's a time where that sacrifice will not pay for your sins um, and so it's not a once for all uh, once to, well, I mean a one time sin uh, like um, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit isn't just you you say to um, you know you say oh Holy Spirit just suddenly off off the top of your your lips it's a continual rejection of Christ so if you look at what, how the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit happened the Pharisees rejected Christ even though they saw and they had the knowledge of Christ and then they, at the end of it, um, they try to kill him. That wasn't blessed from the Holy Spirit. But when they actually said those things of Jesus, Jesus coming to die on the cross for our sins, the Savior of the world, and then saying those things that he did and attributed those things to Satan, at that point, Jesus says you blessed from the Holy Spirit. So you get to a time where you, you almost hand it over. And so it's so, so important that we don't reject Christ today because if there is something in us that um, a conviction of sin, we need to say today is the day of salvation and we need to come and repent today um, of that self and come back to Christ. Um, verse 27 says, But if we willfully sin, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries, this consuming fire, this eternal punishment of pain, suffering, of anguish, of, of gnashing of teeth is reserved for those who are in this position. And they can never come back and they can never come out of it. It's a horrifying a thought to be in. Verse 28. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy of the testimony of two or three uh, witnesses. If you're under the old covenant... Two or three witnesses, you are condemned, you die. The wage of sin is death. Under the new covenant, we are under, under the covenant of great, grace. Verse 29, how much severer punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled under the foot the Son of God and is regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant? Someone who, who just re disregards that blood that was shed for us, the blood that washes away sins. Um... And tramples that, that message of the gospel, of the covenant, by which he was sanctified, 
and has insulted the Spirit of Grace, insulted the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit has done and the new covenant of grace and what Jesus has done through the cross, that insult is unforgivable. There is a time where your chances will be no longer. You, you, you cannot turn back. And so we mustn't continue to reject and we must warn those who are in this willful, habitual sin of rejecting Christ over and over because the time will come where they will no longer be able to come back. And so it's very important that we today bow our knee and make Jesus Lord of our life. Amen.